Okay, YouTube. This is going to kind of be my victory lap for this 2001 Sea-Doo Challenger that I purchased. It's the 240 horsepower, I think you call it M2 Jet Drive by Mercury. It's essentially an outboard motor that they stuck into this guy here. And the Saga that I went through with this boat. I probably have a hundred hours getting it running. With that said, I could definitely do it now in maybe 12 hours. I just spent a lot of time, you know, figuring things out. So it was one of those deals where the guy who sold me the boat said that he had, you know, put it away last year and everything was great. Luckily, I got it for a screaming deal or else I'd be really frustrated. Um, when I, something breaks, you know, like one thing breaks and then you fix it and then you're back to normal. But I purchased this and you just could not believe the amount of things that were wrong and how many things I had to fix to get it running. Um, this is going to be a long video. I hate long videos. I don't usually watch any video on over 10 minutes, but this is going to be over 10 minutes, but you definitely can fast forward. It's going to talk about going from not starting to conking out at 2,500 RPMs to conking out at 35, conking out at 45 to finally success. I think I'm going to start with the tools that you should have. I gotta tell you, I didn't have any of these when this all started, so that was a problem. I think that you can't be without a fuel gauge, a fuel pressure gauge, a compression gauge, a spark gap tester, and what else was it that I needed? Oh, a flywheel puller and a timing light. Those are the things that I needed to get this thing running. Um, I'm not a mechanic, so please leave the comments like you're not doing that right or you're not safe. I really don't care. The comments that are going to be helpful are, hey, I had the same thing happen and I fixed it this way. I think that's important because there is nothing out there about this engine. And so any help about this engine, that's part of the reason why I couldn't make any progress. It's because there's just no help on YouTube. And since I'm not a mechanic without the help, it's kind of impossible. So um, let's start with the serial number because, you know, once I got the correct user manual, it made all the difference, but I couldn't, there's no serial number. So I believe, I believe that the serial number is supposed to be in this general area here on the flywheel cover but i don't have a flywheel cover so i never did find the serial number for this engine i don't know that it's anywhere i looked and looked and looked it says it's places and i never did find it what i did find was the serial number for the jet drive which was good enough to get me the correct uh user manual and it's down here so that's the jet drive down there and let me see if i can find it if you look down back in that corner there, so from back here, the upper right hand corner, like right here, if you look in that corner, there is a round, you can't really see mine, but there is a round circular plate that that is the serial number. This round plate right in here is the serial number for the jet drive which made all the difference. So I got it and it wasn't starting. Um, let's start with the first thing I did is fuel. Turned it on and I heard sorry, the fuel pump on. So I just figured it was working. But let me explain the fuel system for you. It'll make a lot more sense. So there's the fuel tanks down underneath here. And then this here is what I had heard originally. This is called a lift pump. 
So it just sucks the fuel up from the tank. Then it runs into this other pump here, right down here. There's a pump that's run off of the engine, which then sends the fuel from there over to this strainer, water separator, which are right here. And then back into this vapor separator. And my first big problem that I solved was the high pressure fuel pump is in here. It's inside this little thing here. Opened this up, took this apart. Obviously I didn't know what the hell I was doing. Took it apart and it was full of white junk, probably from ethanol gas. And this pump in here was done. Got one for a hundred bucks on Amazon, replaced it. And so that you know if it works right, when you put your hand on it, you can feel it running. What I've done now is there's a little like bicycle valve thing right back here. And I hooked up a fuel pressure gauge to it. Um, it's reading zero now because it's not on and it, drain, it leaks out after a certain amount of time. But, you know, as I got going, I just left it on there, which was the first smart thing I did. So those tools I mentioned earlier, you can get them all for under a hundred bucks at Harbor Freight combined. Um, so I was not getting fuel pressure. I didn't know what the fuel pressure was because I didn't have the gauge at the time. But once I replaced that, I got fuel pressure and lo and behold, the damn thing started. So that was really good. But it would only go to 2,500 RPMs. So... The next thing, and at this point I still don't have tools. I mean, granted, I did this in the completely the wrong order, and we'll talk about the right order. But the next thing I did that went wrong was the trigger. So the internet talks about the trigger, and it definitely was the trigger. So this right here is the wires from the trigger. This is a wire that goes up underneath this flywheel here. The trigger's in there to give the timing. So you need a flywheel puller. Amazon 20 bucks off it comes so you pull off this flywheel and underneath it is the stator and the trigger So you know as many things as were wrong with this motor mine was never the stator So the stator works the original stator, but the trigger was bad and it, I don't even think it was the trigger It was that all of these wire or two of these wires were gone just completely gone just rotted away They like fell apart in my hand and so I thought geez Louise trigger everything's gonna be good I replaced the trigger and I got it to 3500 rpms so man I was pretty sad because this thing really supposed to be running 55 575 something like that or 5075 so I mean those are some major things and I was super disappointed and at this point I went and I got, oh, you know what I did at this point? Is I went and I got, what did I do next? I, I came up with this idea I was gonna do the timing. I don't know why, so I went and bought a timing light. Well, I don't have the flywheel cover, which has the timing little doodad that's right here. So what I did is I built this here. I just set this on like this and then that way I could mark top dead center which I marked right here it's hard to see but I just marked on this piece of wood and then you'll see this weird thing in here I'll I'll talk about that later but you know what's on there from the factory is that scale there timing light and this I went through the timing procedure in the manual and the timing procedure in the manual has you come down here and deal with this little cam and following thing that's underneath the vacuum separator here and it has you adjust all the screws i mean listen the procedure is laid out perfectly i don't need to explain to you how to do it because it's laid out perfectly what i thought was neat is the way i did this and then also that it helped after that I jumped from 2,500 to 3,500 RPMs. Um, no, from 3,500 
to 4,500 RPMs. So I was like just stumped. Static that it had made an increase, but stumped as to what was happening. And then here's where I really went sideways and wrong. You know, the fuel was a great idea. I should have chased the fuel down. But then after that, what I should have done is a compression check. Um, it's not hard to do a compression check. You know, I had never done it on a motor like this before. So I was just avoiding it. And I didn't have the compression check tool. But what I would recommend doing, just pop all the spark plugs out. That's what it tells you to do. Um, you have to ground the spark plug wires so that you want to ground the spark plug wires so that you don't short or ruin something. I don't know. Really, the internet told me to do it, so I did it. So I made up this thing here. Basically, it's alligator clip that goes to the negative battery cable, and each of these little screws has a quick connect that snaps into the uh, each spark plug wire so that it would not short it out um, or so that it would short it out so that this goes to ground so that something doesn't happen with some electrical device or something like that and um, so what I did is on this compression tester the part I like that I didn't use at first I used the screw or any part you know you got screw this in here like this and whatnot but I got to the point where I just got old sticking this thing in there is good enough so you put this on your gauge you put this on the gauge just jam it in there have somebody turn the starter and it worked you know I had like 120 pounds on everything but two cylinders and then I was like son of a bitch so I had zero like 30 pounds or something so I tore the motor out I took the entire motor out um, when you're doing that there's these bolts that are along the base down there that attaches to the jet drive it'll describe it to you in the thing in the book but there is one bolt in the very middle of the rear the stern you have to reach past the exhaust back here and there's one bolt back there that I really had trouble finding and once I got that out, when we hook this, there's the puller thing comes with the little loopy dude thing. We pulled it out and I honed out cylinder three and five. So here's something that I had never thought about with a two stroke engine before. Because every time I ever owned a two stroke engine, it was in a motorcycle. Uh, like a single cylinder motorcycle, but if you run these v6 with a bad fuel injector It'll run because I was running 4500 rpms on four out of six cylinders But what would happen was a fuel injector was bad Which means you're not getting any lubrication now I don't really know why two of them went bad, but I can assure you that it was one of the Injectors was just rusted it hadn't worked in years Which caused it to you know seize ends up looking like this Right here So you can see the rings Welded to the side pissed in and then this broke off. It was a big mess well, I got in there and I replaced all that and then I honed it out you know, do not do it with one of those ball things. I got the hone from Harbor Freight. It's 20 bucks. Put it in there with a bunch of lubrication. And it worked, man, because now I got over 100 pounds of compression. Uh, put it all back together. Got it in. Static at the world. And the damn thing wouldn't start. So... And I mean, I was so confident I brought it out to the lake. I didn't even try to test it at home. Uh, I will tell you this. The reason I, another reason I didn't test it at home is because when I was messing with this trigger, it can get stuck when you're messing around, like when you're messing around with these levers and whatnot. It gets stuck advanced, which is counterclockwise. 
and then you'll start the motor and it'll just take off like a bat out of hell and I didn't want that to happen just sitting in the driveway so I brought it down to the lake started it or tried to start it wouldn't start and I I was furious and then you know at this point I knew everything about this motor because I was 80 hours into it 90 hours into it and I understood the motor when I started I didn't have any comprehension of the motor so um, I did it I did my next testing correctly so what I did is I got a gap tester and I tested all you can do this at one time you undo the spark plugs this is easy you take out the spark plug caps you hook up the wire thing that I showed you to the deal so you don't short anything out or so you do short it out essentially and then you um test your compression and use the spark plug gap tester on each of the spark plugs to test the spark plug gap um, and then if you do that look the motor's gonna run if it has compression fuel and spark I didn't think fuel was an issue because I had my pressure gauge and everything seemed fine. Um, but it turned out somehow or another in the midst of all of that, I lost my lift pump, which had been working just fine. So I placed the lift pump in that whole mess because I was worried about what was happening. What I did is I put this tape on here. And, you know, it's a six-cylinder engine. It fires one, two, three, four, five, six. So every 60 degrees, it is going to fire each cylinder. One, is it zero? You know, well, when you're cranking it and it's an idle, it's six degrees before zero. That's why I have this little mark, because that's about six degrees in front of the 300. So that is when the sixth piston would fire. So I checked every coil or every spark plug to make sure that I didn't screw up my sequencing somehow because I just couldn't figure out what was wrong and then ultimately what it was is down here there's a bleed system in this thing so whenever there's extra if this is part of it right here whenever there's extra fuel that doesn't get burned up it gets cycled back into the vapor separator and one of my little wires down there, or not wires, one of my little hoses in the bottom left was disconnected. And I only caught it because when I was doing the timing check, my wife was cranking the wheel for me, or cranking the starter for me. And I saw a little spurt of, like, vaporized gas going over here. And I was like, what the hell is that? And you know, after all of that, I hooked that little hose up for all those return lines for the bleeding system that cycles back to the vapor separator. And the damn thing started. I brought it out today and it worked absolutely perfect. 5,700 RPMs, Hall's butt. You know, <clears throat> it's two stroke. Fuel compression spark the problem with the spark is it has to be in the right timing i got there but i really did it wrong basically because i didn't know what the hell i was doing at the time i mean i could do everything i just described to you in 12 hours now i could tear the motor out i could do everything in 12 hours but i just didn't know i had to learn every part i started out without the book then i had the wrong book and it just really was hard without any help from YouTube. So I'm hoping that this gets you going just kind of in the right direction. I would test the fuel first, then I'd test for spark, and then I'd test for timing, you know, and maybe even do the compression before all that because it's the easiest part. And if you do all those things, there's no way it doesn't run. Uh, plus there's a crap ton of other tests you can run in the uh, old book which if you don't have the serial number is nearly impossible to find but you can use that jet drive thing in the back i hope that helps youtube thank you for all the help you've ever given me cheers